Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church here in Cuba, New York. It's good to see everyone and it is good to have online viewers. So we all say hello to you out there in digital world. And I have some announcements for the life of our church. Um, first of all, our crop walk is today, so it's, there's still time for you to give. I know Nyla is receiving offerings, and um, it's going to be over at Chamberlain Park at 1.30. So we're hoping that that's going to be a real success today. Other announcements, the Board of Christian Ed is meeting right after church today, so you know, all know who you are. And we have a special need traveling to Rochester. If you are, would you be willing to deliver three boxes of White Cross supplies to the Cameron Community Ministries? If you can help, please contact Ann Gross. And here is Ann walking in right now. <laughs> Don't go away, Ann. I'm going to let you do your, your special thing for the crop walk in just a couple of minutes glad you're here. So if you are able to drop off those boxes of White Cross to Cameron Community Ministries, let Ann know. Her phone number is 585-968-2773, or you can email her. World Mission Offering. As you know, today is World Communion Sunday, and so we are going to be lifting up our World Mission Offering all through October, so you can give at any time that supports our ministries abroad and our missionaries, and it's a very important mission to give to. Also, our ABC NYS Biennial is coming up very soon from... Um, Saturday, no, let's see, Wednesday to Saturday, October 14th through the 17th, and it's all online, and I registered last week, so it should be um, pretty good. There are going to be some, um, there's going to be worship on the first evening. If they all start at 7, and then the business meeting is at 9.30 on Saturday morning, um, but there will be some speakers and some uh, round table discussion that we'll be able to take part of, so I hope that you will register for that. Also, the rummage rooms, we've been announcing that they are closed and that you can drop things off by appointment only. I noticed on Facebook yesterday that the rummage rooms opened, kind of a test, um, and so there will be rules in place. They're just testing this out, but so far as I know, they will be open on Saturdays, their regular hours. They are allowing eight shoppers at a time for 20 minutes. Masks and social distancing are required. So that's good news. I'm glad we're moving ahead with that. Also, Walt Hibbard uh, is doing very well at home and wishes to convey thanks to everyone who remembered him and his family in their thoughts and prayer. In prayers. He is doing well, and that is good to hear. All right, I think that's it for announcements. Anne, would you like to come up and twist over the mic and do your announcement? Good morning. Today is finally a crop walk takes place this afternoon. I'd just like to remind walkers, you have a choice this year. If you'd like to walk with a group, come to the park, Chamberlain Park at 1.30. We'll meet at the shelter. Please wear your mask. Um, if you prefer, you can walk at home. Remember wherever you want, whether it's today or maybe you've already done it or maybe it's tomorrow. That's up to you. Um, a week from today, I'd like money turned in, whether you give it to me or you give it, leave it at the office. That's fine. And sponsors, we're still looking for you out there. So if <laughs> anyone has not yet donated and would like to do so, please contact one of the walkers, or again, you can just leave your money at the church office. Checks to go be made to CWS Bank, and I pray that Bernie holds off until things are <laughs> good. <laughs> we'll hope for the best. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. One more small announcement for all of us. Uh, viewers at home, if you'd like to gather your communion um, elements. Pastor Alex is going to lead us in communion this morning, and that's going to be wonderful. I hope you've all picked up your own um, 
juice and a little wafer, and I just want to give you some instruction about that. There are actually two pull tabs, so make sure when we're ready that you pull the, the top one, which is clear. You can see that it's sitting right on top of the one below it, and so that top one is for the wafer, and the bottom one is for the juice. And there is a waste basket right by the door, so as you leave, you can just toss your container in the basket. All right, let us prepare our hearts now for worship. Please join me now in our call to worship. God has called us to be the church in the world. We worship as our witness to the world of our commitment to God. God feeds us with bread and fruit of the vine. God nourishes us for our ministry in the world. Let us worship the risen Christ, who is present in our worship. Let us worship Jesus the Christ, who called us to celebrate the Lord's Supper in memory of him. Please pray with me. O oh God, whose actions in the past reach to the present, we thank you for communion that not only calls to mind Jesus' last supper, but that looks ahead to the great banquet in the resurrection. As we worship this day, may we experience your presence in the ordinance we celebrate. May we remember you as our creator and redeemer. May we remember our call to be your people, witnessing to your presence in a world hungry and thirsty for true bread and true mind. As you feed us today, may we remember those who are physically and spiritually hungry. Amen. And now Pastor Alex will center us in Refiner's Fire. Well, we have lots to pray for and lots to thank God for. So let's gather up our hearts and our 
joys and concerns and lift them to the Lord. Please pray with me. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we can worship you this day. We ask, oh God, that you would bless us through our worship with you. We pray that our worship will be honoring and glorifying to your name. Lord, we seek your spirit to speak to us, to change us, to love us in such ways that we better may love others. Lord God, we thank you for the healings that have taken place this week. We thank you that Walter is doing so much better. And Lord, we pray for others who are sick in mind or body or spirit. We ask for your healing grace upon all. Oh, Lord God, heal in the ways that only you can heal, that deep inner healing, Lord, that brings peace and comfort and strength and resilience and love. Holy God, we also pray for those who have lost loved ones. We lift especially to you the Hartmans and the Hunters and all those who are still mourning such deep loss of loved ones, O oh Lord. We pray that you would be their constant companion, that you would reassure them of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ's resurrection. May we, as a church, Lord, look to you as our provider, our res resourcer, our blessing, our call, our ministry. Be at the very center of all that we are and all that we do. And Lord, for those who are in seemingly impossible situations where decisions need to be made, where hope may seem absent, where grace is not always given. All of those hardships, Lord, we pray for all who are going through those things. We pray for those who have suffered violence and neglect. We ask your blessing upon our world, O oh God, especially as we remember this day, World Communion Sunday. Keep your church in communion and unity with one another. And Lord, we pray that you would help us, empower us to make a difference in our world for your kingdom. Lord, we pray for our nation. We lift up our president and his family and all those who have tested positive for COVID. We ask, O oh God, for your grace and your strength, for your healing, for your guidance. And Lord, we lift up our very selves, that we would seek you with a whole heart, and that we would find you in the wonderful moments of the days that you have given us. And Lord, we do pray that all would be in the name and for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Pastor Alex. The sermon today is called Called to be Salt and Light, reading Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. Listen for God's word to you as I read. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored. It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Here ends the reading for God's holy word for us today. May it bless us. Called to be salt and Light. Well, today is World Communion Sunday, and it is the Sunday that we Christians throughout the world celebrate our unity, our oneness in Christ. So I want to ask you, when and what was it that brought you to faith in Christ? And what has been your guiding scripture in your walk with the Lord as you have followed Jesus? Can you take a moment to think about that? What is it that brought you to faith in the Lord? And what scripture is your guiding light as you walk with the Lord? Well, many of you know, because I've told you before, that I came to Christ when I was very young through a Sunday school teacher. But I was not aware until many years later that there was such a thing as scriptures and that Jesus' words were, were written down and that we could learn from them. So much, much later, I began to read my Bible every day. And finally, I came to that passage in John chapter 3, verses 16 through 21, and I knew I knew that God loved everyone in the world and that he loved and loves even me and he loves even you. 
So let me read you that passage, because that really is the whole kernel of our faith. John chapter 3, verses 16 through 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Aren't those wonderful words? Wonderful, wonderful words. And so we know this light, the light of the world, to be Jesus, don't we? Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That was John chapter 12, verse 8. And finally, we come to today's passage where Jesus says that we, we, are the light of the world, and we are the salt of the earth. So let's get right to it, shall we? If we are salt, what are we exactly? Hmm. Well, I'm probably preaching to the choir, right? I mean, you all know. You've probably heard a hundred sermons on salt and light, but it's always good to hear it again. We know that salt is a preservative, don't we? And God uses it to share the gospel of salvation. So it follows that the gospel preserves. It saves as people hear it and believe it and live by it. And we also know that salt makes us thirsty, right? God uses us to make other people thirsty for God as they witness the holiness, the grace, the peace, and the beauty in our lives as we serve and follow Jesus. So we want God to make us like salt. But sometimes we might overdo it. Just a couple of nights ago, I decided I would cook a new recipe for chicken, and uh, I've been having fun with sea salt. How many of you use sea salt at home? Yeah, I hear it's better, and you know, I got one of those little containers, you know, that you take the lid off, and, and you can grind it. Well, you turn it upside down, and you grind it over your food. And, you know, I have to tell you that when I use my little grinder, I just feel like a professional cook. It just makes me feel like, wow, I'm doing something special here. Well, that night when I was cooking my chicken, and it was in a really nice kind of a, a soupy sauce, and you know what? I twisted the wrong part, and almost all of the sea salt fell into the pan. And I tried. I tried so hard to get all that salt out, but it was already mixing in with the soupy sauce, and, and I ended up having to throw it all, all out. And you know, I think sometimes our Christian witness can be like that, where, where God just calls us to share a, a, a word, not anything too complicated, but, but because we've studied so well and because we are so seasoned in Christ, we want to give them the whole the whole thing, right? And so it may feel to them like we're taking our Bibles and beating them over the head with it. And so it's, it's not always good to, to just let it rip, right? No, we're supposed to listen to that spirit within us 
you know, to listen to, to where that other person is. And, and what, what is it, Lord, that you would have me say or do for this person? Because oftentimes, Jesus just needs to speak gently to people, right? But, but we can get kind of enthusiastic. Well, that's one way that we might kind of abuse our saltiness. But then again, we can't dilute it either. You know, salt doesn't change. I understand. Are there any chemists in here or anybody that knows a lot about chemistry? NaCl, so that sodium, is that sodium chloride? Salt, right? Table salt. Well, did you know that that is a really stable compound and it's really, really hard to get those molecules separated? And so there isn't too much you can really do to salt except dilute it with other things so that the salt grows farther and farther apart, all of those grains, and so you might not actually taste it so much because of the other stuff, right? And so we can become diluted in our Christ saltiness. You know what I mean. All of those things that we might want in life that we pursue rather than asking God, is, is this where you want me to go? Is this what you'd like me to have? Um, or maybe we just are so troubled, you know, we keep looking down and it's sort of like we're Eeyore. Woe is me. It's never, nothing's ever going to turn out well. And, and so we can get kind of immersed in negativity. And so that's not a good thing to mix with our saltiness either. We need to go back to the scriptures and remember those, those wonderful passages of, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and all things work together for good who love God and are called, to, and are called in his righteousness. So it's good to bone up on our Bibles and, and know the word of God and to work it the right way as, as Timothy does. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. And I know you know this too, but it's, it's always good to revisit whether we are shining or not shining Christ's light in the world around us. The world seems pretty dark today to me. I don't know if you're feeling that way too, oh, I know I've been pretty sheltered. There hasn't been a whole lot that, that has really brought me down. But this tiredness, this when is it ever going to be, the way it used to be, why, you know, having to separate ourselves, not to be able to, to hug and to pass the peace of Christ and all of those important things that we do as a community in Christ. It can feel heavy. And so, better that we, we look to the positive things about, about our, our reality. Our reality is that God has never left us. God is still with us, and God still prepares the blessings that we can find each and every day. We are the light of the world. Annie Dillard has said in her book, Teaching a Stone to Talk, Expeditions and Encounters, she says this, Jesus encourages his followers to bring light to a dark and broken world. That's our call. That's our job. We're supposed to be doing that. The light is the light of the gospel, she says, and it draws all people to its warmth and radiance. That's a truth, too, although we, we don't always see it, do we? This mission has been primary from the very beginning throughout every age. Think about that. This call to be the salt and the light of Christ has never changed. And Archbishop Te William Temple is often quoted as saying, the church is the only organization on earth that exists for those who are not its members. Think about that. The church is the only organization on earth that exists for those who are not their members. Do you believe that? 
I believe it. I believe it. So you see, our Christian walk is not just about us, is it? It's about the whole world. It's about shining our light. It's about getting people thirsty for God. Well, in order for the light to be seen, we must be willing to go where the darkness exists. And that can be really scary, can't it? To engage it and to walk through it so that in time, the light can overcome it. Again, Annie Dillard writes, you do not have to sit outside in the dark. If, however, you want to look at the stars, and I have a beautiful picture, not of the stars, but of something else. Anyway, she said, you do not have to sit outside in the dark. If, however, you want to look at the stars, you will find that darkness is necessary. Did you ever think about that? The darkness in our lives is necessary? Hmm. We must go into those dark places bearing the light of Christ. The light is not given for our own personal enjoyment. Wow. We can enjoy it, yes, but it's not just for our enjoyment. And that is the key, my friends. We must light our world. And so two thoughts in closing. First, when we shine our light, we have more impact for God's world than we could even hope for or imagine. The Lord has his people deployed all over the earth. And I'm willing to bet that his light in us is brighter than the lights that light up the night sky. This is a picture, a photo that was taken through NASA in 2017. And, and this just, it really, well, you can't see it as well as I could see it. Do you see all those lights? That's technology that's lighting up the world. And the United States, especially the eastern seaboard, is just full of light. And so when God looks down, of course, God is here. God isn't just up there. But when God takes the bird's eye view or the satellite eye view, you can see all of those lights. And so just imagine how bright we are as we walk with Christ and as we go into those places that, that God leads to speak God's loving truth to others. I, I, I'm just so blown away by that. And so a lot of times we can't see the good that we do or try to do, but we can trust that God's Spirit is working because we have said, yes, I will share. I will go to that dark place, Lord. And secondly, it reminds me of a song written by Christopher M. Rice called Carry Your Candle. Have you heard that song? I won't sing it for you because <laughs> I don't sing very well. But I first heard it sung by Kathy Tricoli. And some of it goes like this. There is a candle in every soul, some brightly burning, some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites the candle, and makes his home. Carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the hopeless, confused, and torn. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle, go light your world. And it goes on, carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the lonely, the tired, and worn. We are a family whose hearts are blazing, so let's raise our candles and light up the sky, praying to our Father in the name of Jesus, make us a beacon in darkest times. Seek out the helpless, the deceived, and the poor. Seek out the hopeless, confused, 
and torn. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle, go light your world. You see, as Jesus commanded and commissioned the disciples before his ascension, we too are commanded and commissioned to go. Our faith was never meant to be private. We know far too well that the world is hurting. We must seek those dark places and shine Christ's light. Let us pray. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for your light. We thank you that you go before us and behind us, that you are with us always. You never leave us. And so, Lord, again, we place our lives in your hands, and we ask you, Lord, to help us to see those who are hurting, who are lonely, who are poor, who are needing your touch, your light, your salt in their life. Oh, Heavenly Father, help us to share more and more that the part that we do in our own little vineyard of yours in this community, that it would have much, much value in the kingdom of God for your glory and for the lives of those whom you choose to touch through each of us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And now At this time, we want to dedicate our offerings. So I hope that if you've brought your offering, you've dropped it in. If not, please drop it in on the way out. But let us dedicate those offerings. Some have come in, I'm sure, in the past week. Some are going to come in this week, and we'll dedicate those next week. Um, 
And we thank God that God truly is our provider. So let us pray a prayer asking God to, to bless our hearts as we give. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all the ways that you provide for your church and for us. We ask, dear Lord, that you would continue to help us to find ways to, to give. And, and Lord, we just pray that you will, will bless them. And so now, Lord, we stand as God's people for the glory of Patri. Let us pray. <clears throat> oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the ways that you can work, even with, even with the little that we feel we can give at times, Lord. And thank you for giving us generous hearts that, that continue to be generous with our, with our money, with our time, with our talent. And Lord, we pray that you would gather them all up, that you would bless them and multiply them, that you would send them forth, Lord, for the healing and the salvation of our world. In Christ's name, we offer and dedicate our gifts. Amen. And now we come to communion. And so get your little packets ready. And Pastor Alex is now going to, to lead us in the Lord's Supper. World Communion Sunday is a celebration of unity in Christ as experienced in Holy Communion. Today, as we lift bread and cup, Christians around the world do the same. We pray together, asking God to make us one with Christ and one with each other. The first Sunday in October is set aside to be intentional about our desire for better relationships with Christians across all those various lines that seemingly and sometimes do divide us. So on this Sunday, but really every day, it is good to remember the unity of the body. When I poured a fresh cup of coffee earlier this week, I must have been completely distracted. I was looking outside and watching the leaves and the birds. And when I finally snapped two, my mug was filled to the brim and slightly overflowing with coffee. Wow, that is pretty full, I said out loud. No one else around me heard me but the cat. You know, for weeks I've been pretty quiet, feeling sort of stuck. I've been needing some direction and various roles that I play. So I asked God to talk to me, but I You've probably experienced this. I didn't feel like I was getting any sort of answer. I waited, and I waited more. And I resigned myself to the idea that I'm in yet another season of life, which requires a, a lot of patience, patience that I often lack. So as I've tried to work through hurts and grievances and different things in my life going different ways, wondering sometimes if I'm still relevant, asking that big old question, is there more? God gave me the answer that I needed. 
Did you get that? The answer he gave me was, my cup runneth over. <laughs> you all know that 23rd Psalm, and I want to pull that fifth verse out that says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. The New English translation reads it this way which takes a little bit of a different view. You prepare a feast before me in plain sight of my enemies. You refresh my head with oil. My cup is completely full. I love that translation for that particular verse because it lets me know that God doesn't take away my enemies. God doesn't take away your enemies. He doesn't promise a life full of ease and no hardships, but he promises that he is enough, more than enough. He promises to refresh us in the midst of the troubles, in the middle of the battle, in the presence of our enemies. Yep, in that 23rd Psalm, we talk a lot about the Lord is my shepherd, right? He guides us, he leads us. But in this particular verse, in Psalm 23, it's talking about him preparing a table. So yes, the Lord is my shepherd, but at this table, he is also my host, the host of the table. And the host's care and concern doesn't eliminate the presence of my enemies, but enables the experience of God's goodness and bounty, even in their midst. Nothing is hurried. There is no confusion, no disturbance. The enemy is at the door. And yet, God prepares a table. And the Christian sits down and eats as if everything were in perfect peace. The peace that only God can give his people, even in the midst of the most trying circumstances. Today and every day, I am so incredibly thankful for a God who meets me where I am, even when I'm tired and frustrated and incredibly impatient. <laughs> God reminds me of the gifts he has given me. My cup runneth over. So when we get into a hurry and want things done our way, but have to wait anyway, we know that God is the one being patient with us, always walking with us at our own pace, rather than demanding that we do more than we're ready for. He prepares us like he prepares the table. Our cups runneth over. What does your cup look like? Could it use some filling up? Your host is ready. The table is set. We welcome your presence. Let's bow together in prayer. Today, God, we confess fumblings and failures in accomplishing unity. 
as we set aside yet another day to remind ourselves of that task. One in the spirit. One in the bond of love. On this World Communion Sunday, give us eyes to recognize your reflection in the eyes of Christians everywhere. Give us a mind to accept and celebrate our differences. Give us a heart big enough to love your children everywhere. And give us encouragement as our cup overflows. We thank you for setting a table with space enough for all. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. Take and eat. Would you bow with me as we pray over the bread before it is distributed? Lord, as we take this bread, we remember that you are the bread of life. You feed our souls. You nourish our hearts. And you give us sustenance to run the race before us. Amen. And now the bread will be distributed. Christ said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Would you bow with me as we pray over the cup before it is distributed? Lord, as we bless this cup, we remember that you are the giver of life. You are forgiveness. You bring deep peace to our souls. And your love flows within us. Our cups run over. Amen. And now the cup will be distributed. Christ said, whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Would you please stand? I know we can't hold hands, but I think I've said this before. We can be like the Who's down in Whoville who did stand hand to hand, but we're going to stand heart to heart. And I know that you can't sing with me, but again, you can sing in your heart. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together 
bind us together with love. And now as you're standing, remain that way for the benediction. As people who have been fed, go now to feed the world. And as we have shared from the table of the host, go out as people connected to the vine. Amen. Amen. And amen.